Hi, this is Eileen speaking. Hey, it's me, Kat. Oh, hi, what's up? Too complicated to explain over the phone. I'll fill her in about it later. I'm trying to get a hold of a police report concerning Grandpa, but the cops refused to give it to me. Yep, the state laws are really strict about that sort of thing. Ugh, there must be some way to get my hands on it. Sure, but probably not within the boundaries of the law, Kathy. Am I hearing this right? Are you encouraging criminal behavior, E? Oh, I would never! I'm trying to get a hold of a police report concerning Grandpa, but the cop- Yep, the state laws are- Ugh, there must be- Sure, but- Am I hearing the- Oh, I- Too complicated to exp- Okay, gotta go, talk to you later. Bye, Kathy! Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? We already talked about that. Well, gotta go. See ya. Hello, Sheriff. Mind if I ask you a few more questions? <sighs> if you must. Do you know what happened to Joseph Rain in 81? He had a stroke in the woods, that's what happened. If that's all there is, why would Sheriff Truman open an investigation? It was just standard procedure. A general occurrence report always has to be filed. I see. Did you know him at all? No, I haven't been in town for long. Man sure has one hell of a reputation, though. It's been over a decade since he was put in that wheelchair, and people still talk about the man he used to be. It's like he was a cult leader or something. Sounds like a conspiracy theory to me. Could be, but you know what they say. Things too good to be true usually are. Asking nicely clearly didn't do the trick. I need to figure out something else. What's your opinion on this church? It's a fine church. I go there myself every Sunday. I don't want to show him that. I don't want to show him that. Yeah, that won't get me into trouble at all. That's all for now. Good. Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? I wanted to ask if you know anything about my grandfather's accident. I really don't know much beyond the rumors. We already talked about that. What's your opinion on this church? I think it's a nice enough church. Why? I don't know. The priest seemed odd. Kind of pushy. Yeah, I get your point. But I know the guy, he's harmless. If you say so. Well, gotta go. See ya. I can't while he's sitting there. I can't while he's sitting there. A bunch of How's cops lining up for a photo. Lady? Uh, okay, I guess. Maybe halfway through. That's no good. We're gonna have to cancel lunch today. Again? Oh, man. Your motivation shouldn't be limited by your growling stomach, Lanny. <sighs> if you say so, boss.
Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Well, gotta go. See ya. Hello, Sheriff. Mind if I ask you a few more questions? <sighs> if you must. Asking nicely clearly didn't... That's all for now. Good. Tons of miscellaneous files. I don't see anything labeled as police reports, so those must be elsewhere. A photo of the sheriff shaking hands with some bald guy in a suit. Probably the mayor. It's always the mayor. Tons of miscellaneous files. I don't see anything labeled as police reports, so those must be elsewhere. Just some photo, nothing special about it. Just some photo, nothing special about it. Just some photo, nothing special about it. A gold medal of some kind. A potted plant. Looks a bit thirsty. Alright, let's see how this plays out. Lenny, quit loitering and make some goddamn coffee. Ten four, coming right up. Oh, it better be. Hey. What? I can't hear you. That was getting annoying. Hey. Hi there. So, why'd they put you in that cell? Uh, well, uh, it's all just a big misunderstanding. Is that so? Yeah, I, I didn't mean to steal anything. I was just using my pockets to move the beer to the checkout. That's the worst excuse I have ever heard. For your information, I happen to have a deadly fear of shopping carts. I take my last statement back. This excuse is even worse. Hey, it wasn't your father who was killed by a shopping cart when you were eight. Uh, I sure hope not. To be fair, mine wasn't either. It was just Uncle Bob. But that doesn't mean it was any less traumatic, mind you. To this day, I still get nervous breakdowns at grocery stores. I think I've heard enough, buddy. You're right. We should stop before the flashbacks begin. So, why'd they put you in that cell? Uh, well, uh, it's all just a big misunderstanding. Is that so? Yeah, I, I didn't mean to steal anything. I was just using my pockets to move the beer to the checkout. That's the worst excuse I have ever heard. For your information, I happen to have a deadly fear of shopping carts. I take my last statement back. This excuse is even worse. Hey, it wasn't your father who was killed by a shopping cart when you were eight. Uh, I sure hope not. To be fair, mine wasn't either. It was just Uncle Bob. But that doesn't mean it was any less traumatic, mind you. To this day, I still get nervous breakdowns at grocery stores. I think I've heard enough, buddy. You're right. We should stop before the flashbacks begin. Okay, gotta go. See ya! No wanted posters. I'm disappointed. An axe, a sledgehammer, and some other heavy tools. Brilliant idea to leave those lying around next to evidence lockers and locked cells. If I ever need to find evidence, I'll know where to look. They look sturdy enough. Wouldn't be able to break them open without taking my time and making a lot of noise.
If I ever feel the urge to clean, I'll know where to go. Hey, it's me, Kat. Oh, hi, what's up? I'm trying to get a hold of a police report concerning Grandpa, but the cops refuse to give it to me. Yep, the state laws are really strict about that sort of thing. Ugh, there must be some way to get my hands on it. Sure, but probably not within the boundaries of the law, Kathy. Am I hearing this right? Are you encouraging criminal behavior, E? Oh, I would never! Okay, gotta go. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy! Lenny, for the last goddamn time, stop leaving the locker keys on this table. Always... Put them back in your desk when you're done. This phone is not here for your personal calls either. The county shouldn't have to pay for your giggly shenanigans. Sheriff. A big red gas can with a hose. Somebody probably used that to siphon gas. A jail cell. Looks cramped. Hey. Hi there. You need to keep the blonde cop out there busy for a while. I do? Ten bucks says you do. Hmm. I'd say my services in this matter are worth at least twenty bucks. Nine. Fifteen. Eight. Fine. Ten. Seven. Deal. Good. So, uh, what am I doing again? Distract that young cop in the lobby. I don't care how you do it, as long as you keep him occupied for a while. Okay, then. Let me know when. Will do. Okay, gotta go. See ya! Hey, the jail is off limits. You shouldn't be in there. Oh, sorry. I, I just heard someone yelling. Uh, I think that guy in the cell needs some help. Ah, <sighs> oh, what now? Okay, I have to make this quick. I see a bunch of keys to the evidence lockers. I could take one, but I need to know what I'm looking for first. Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Well, gotta go. See ya. can't while he's sitting there. Time to waste more coffee, I guess. Lenny! Coffee! Jeez Louise, already? I'll take care of it, boss. Hi there! Uh, could you distract Lenny again? Sure, I needed to puke again anyway. Good to know. Okay, gotta go. See ya!
Guess what? He's having some kind of fit in there. <sighs> Not again. Here we go again. Lots of police reports. They all look fairly recent, though. Nothing older than 1990. I see a bunch of keys to the evidence lockers. I could take one, but I need to know what I'm looking for first. Hello, Sheriff. Mind if I ask you a few more questions? If you must. Do you know what happened to Joseph Rain in 81? He had a stroke in the woods, that's what happened. If that's all there is, why would Sheriff Truman open an investigation? It was just standard procedure. I see. No, I am mean, man sure has one hell of a... It's like he was a... Sounds like... Could be. Asking nicely clearly didn't do the trick. That's all for now. Good. Fax machines, the pinnacle of modern technology. Oh dear. There are a few things I need to ask you, Grandma. Very well, dear. I don't see a reason to ask her about that. I don't think we need to discuss that anymore. See you later, Grams. Take care, dear. small table lamp. I shouldn't overstay my welcome. I shouldn't overstay... A wedding photo from when my grandparents married. They look younger than I am now. Things have sure changed. It's a photo of this very farm from way back. It says... June 12, 1910 in the corner. Some kind of winter forest scene. I've always wondered if it's supposed to be Conwell Woods or not. Cute red horse. It's some old Swedish thing, I think. This paint looks fresh. Grandma must have had this restored recently. I shouldn't overstay my welcome. Oh, hello, dear. There are a few things I need to ask you, Grandma. Very well, dear. What do you think about this church, Grandma? They seem harmless to me, but they can be a bit pushy at times. Huh, <laughs> you could say that. Handing out pamphlets at funerals is in pretty bad taste. 
Awfully strange behavior for a priest, I'll give you that. I don't want to show her that. See you later, Grams. Take care, dear. family mausoleum. It says, Price. The family must have been fairly rich. Those things don't come cheap. Rest in peace, Grandpa. I wish things could have been different. Conwell Springs. I never thought I'd return to this place. Good idea, but they would notice me right now. Lots of police reports. They all look fairly recent, though. Nothing older than 1990. Lenny, for the last goddamn time, stop leaving the locker keys on this table. Always this phone is a large evidence locker, probably for securing some of the bulkier things. If I ever need to find evidence, I'll know where to look. They look sturdy enough, wouldn't be able to break them open without taking my time and making a lot of noise. Okay, these must be the archived police reports that Lenny was talking about. Time to start digging. Yes, found it. August 16th, 1981. Let's have a look. Hmm, I'm gonna have to get my hands on that recorder.
Lenny, for the last goddamn time, stop leaving the locker keys on this table. Always put them back in your desk when you're done. This phone is not here for your personal calls either. The county shouldn't have to pay for your giggly shenanigans, Sheriff. Hey. Hi there. Uh, could you distract Lenny again? Sure, I needed to puke again anyway. Good to know. Okay, gotta go. See ya. Guess what? He's having some kind of fit in there. <sighs> Not again. Here we go again. Okay, let's find the key to locker number five. Got it. All right, got it. If I ever need to find evidence, I'll know where to look. They look sturdy enough. Wouldn't be able to break them open without taking my time and making a lot of noise. Note to self. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. I just don't want her to worry. She has enough to think about with everything that's been going on lately. With Sharon and Kathy. Anyway, I'm getting close to finding the source. I have a promising new theory. It should be ready for a test soon. Hello, dear. There are a few things I need to ask you, Grandma. Very well, dear. Would you mind if I took a look in the attic? I suppose it would do no harm. Come with me. Thanks, Grandma. You are welcome, dear. Be careful now. The bulb looks burned out. I'll have to replace it. Free light bulb. Score!
There we go. An electronic metal detector. Kinda clunky for a person to lug around without a specific use for it. An industrial-sized jug of detergent. Various books and office supplies. Nothing in particular catches the eye. Empty. A thick book about math. An old typewriter covered in cobwebs. Just some old bills. Nothing interesting. It looks like someone was doing geometry. I can't make much sense of it. Let's see what's in here. There were two pictures, a newspaper clipping, a key, and a tape inside. Oh, and a single copper penny too, for some reason. Looks overexposed. I can't make much out. I think I see trees in the background, but most of the picture is just bright white. There's probably some way to enhance this back at school. I'll figure it out tomorrow when I'm back. The tape I found in the briefcase, labeled Answering Machine. It should play fine in Mr. Dicto. Not a big fan of that idea. Oh, hello, dear. There are a few things I need to ask you, Grandma. Very well, dear. I should probably listen to the tape first. Grams, can you tell me anything about this picture? It looks awfully bright. Perhaps something was wrong with the camera. Yeah, maybe. I should try to figure something out tomorrow at the university. Look at this photo I found in the locked briefcase. Goodness, I haven't seen that picture in years. This was taken when Joseph was stationed at McConnell Air Force Base. That's him right there on the left. 
What about the other two? I don't remember the name of the smiling man in the back. The gentleman on the right was Joseph's best friend, Charles Wade. What can you tell me about Charles Wade? Well, I do know he has made quite a name for himself since he and Joseph went to war together. Apparently, he came up with some brilliant piece of engineering for the airplanes. They use it everywhere now. Any idea how to get in touch with him? I'm afraid not, dear. I haven't seen him for years. He and Joseph grew apart before you were born. Any particular reason for that? Oh, uh, not that I know of. Can you tell me anything about McConnell Air Force Base? It's not very far from Conwell Springs. Joseph was stationed there for some time during the war. I believe they're still training young pilots there today. So when did Grandpa enlist in the Air Force? Oh, it was barely past the honeymoon when Joseph left to fight in that terrible war, together with his best friend Charles and my brother Andrew. Those were nerve-wracking years. I was so worried I thought I would burst. Every short visit from Joseph was a joy, but he kept going back to the front, to my great dismay. When I told Joseph about being pregnant with your father, he finally realized that enough was enough. He had done his duty. Shortly thereafter, he returned to a quiet farmer's life in this very house, helping your great-grandfather with the crops until he passed. Bye, Grandma. I'll be back later. So long. Charles Wade. I don't know how, but I will talk to you one way or another. I don't have anything to say about that. You've reached the rain residence. Leave a message after the beep. Hello, Joseph, Mrs. Rain. It's me, Charles. I thought I'd give you a call. Erica just had her firstborn. It's a boy. Thankfully, he looks nothing like his father. Uh, listen, I was thinking maybe you'd like to come and visit. And what about your little Kathy? Maybe she wants to see the baby. Well, anyways, hope to see you soon. All the best. Bye. You people make me sick. We're never coming back. Don't call, don't write. If you ever try to contact us, I will call the police. Joseph, you there? It's me, Cocky. I, it happened to me too. You're the only one I trust now. Just call me back as soon as you can. Hmm, I wonder who this cocky is. There are a few things I need to ask you, Grandma. Very well, dear. Does the nickname cocky mean anything to you? Sounds vaguely familiar. It reminds me of the aviator call signs Joseph and his friends gave one another. Joseph was vigilante. I can't count the number of times he got into trouble for breaking the rules. To this day, I have no idea how he always managed to land on his feet. <laughs> Must be hereditary, given the things I've gotten away with. Every time I wake up, I am genuinely surprised that I'm not in jail. <laughs> I'm sure it's not that bad, dear. But to get back to the subject... You don't have any idea of who this cocky is? 
I'm afraid not, but the Air Force might be a good place to start. Does the nickname Cocky mean anything to you? Sounds vaguely familiar. It reminds me of the aviator call sign. Joseph was to this... <laughs> Every time I wake up, I am genuinely surprised that I'm... <laughs> I'm sure it's not that. But to get back... I'm afraid not. Well, gotta go, Grams. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? What's your opinion on Charles Wade? He's okay in my book. Invested a lot in the local community over the years. He's been a prominent figure in town for as long as I can remember. Nah, I don't want to ask him about that. Nah, I don't want to ask him about that. Well, gotta go. See ya. Hello, Sheriff. Mind if I ask you a few more questions? <sighs> if you must. What's your opinion on Charles Wade? There's a lot of people in town with their noses up that man's ass, that's for sure. That's so? Care to elaborate? Just another rich bastard doing what he does. They even renamed Main Street to Wade Street a few months back. What a goddamn joke. I don't need to ask him that. I don't need to ask him that. That's all for now. Good. Hey. Hi there. Okay, gotta go. See ya. Hey, it's me, Kat. Oh, hi, what's up? I'm trying to contact Charles Wade. You know, the industrialist? Wow, really? Why? It's complicated, but he knew Grandpa back in the day. They went to war together. Huh, must be super hard to get in touch with a person like that. 
Uh, yeah, I'm finding that out. Maybe you could ask someone in the Air Force. If he used to serve with your granddad, I mean. Yeah, could be worth a shot. I don't need to ask her about that. I'm trying to find this guy, but all I have is his nickname, Cocky. Well, what do you know about the guy? Not much. I think he was in the Air Force and served with Grandpa. Maybe you could try to find somebody in the Air Force who knew him then? Yeah, that might be worth a shot. Okay, gotta go. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy! Damn, no Charles Wade in here. Was worth a shot, but being rich and famous and all, I guess he's got a hidden number. No hit for Wade Industries either, but it was kind of a long shot for them to have an office in this small county anyway. I should try to get a hold of him some other way. All right, got it. No result for that. McConnell Air Force Base, how can I help you? Hi. I was just wondering if you had time to answer a few questions. Sure thing, ma'am. Ask away. Do you know anything about what happened to Joseph Rain in 81? I know that he was no longer stationed here at the base at that time. He'd left the Air Force decades earlier. But as a Conwell Springs citizen, sure, I've heard the rumors just like everybody else. How he was found by the sheriff all messed up, walking out of the woods with some kind of unexplained brain damage. Any theory as to what he was doing out there? I'm afraid not, ma'am. But I'm positive that it had nothing to do with this base or our operations here. Okay. What can you tell me about his service at McConnell? Well, Joseph Rain is a legend around here. His pile of metals weighs more than my car. I was fortunate enough to meet him before he suffered his injury, and I must say, what an inspiring man. I'm positive that he would have made general if he'd stuck around. Any idea of why he quit? He looks so happy in the pictures from the war. Oh, your family, ma'am? Granddaughter. Well, then I'm sorry for your loss. I heard about his recent passing. Appreciate it, buddy. So, about him quitting. I shouldn't speak ill of the dead, but some say the war broke him. PTSD. Me? I don't think so. When I met him, he had this aura about him, like he wasn't afraid of anything. Maybe it was his guilt. He ended a lot of lives, but that's just me speculating. Gotcha. Thanks for the thoughts. I'm trying to get a hold of Charles Wade. Would you happen to know how to reach him? I'm sorry, ma'am, but Charles Wade is a public figure. He has explicitly asked us not to provide his contact details to anyone. Is there any way you can make an exception? I really need to talk to Mr. Wade. No can do. I can't really help you out unless you have some sort of official business. But what if it was a matter of life and death? Ma'am, if you're in a life-threatening situation, I suggest you call 911. I do have official business. I'm Deputy Reagan. I'm calling from Conwell Springs Sheriff's Department. Nice try. Do you know what caller ID is? I can clearly see that you're not calling from the station. Goodbye. Damn, I can't pull that off if I call from here. Hey. Hi there. Okay, gotta go. See ya.
can't while he's sitting there. Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Well, gotta go. See ya. Hello, Sheriff. Mind if I ask you a few more questions? <sighs> if you must. I don't need to ask him that. That's all for now. Good. I can't while he's sitting there. Hi there! So, why'd they put you- uh, Well, uh- Is that so? Yeah, I- I- That's the worst- For your I take my- Hey, what- Uh, sure- To be fair, mine wasn't- But that doesn't- I think I've- You're right. Okay, gotta go. See ya! Hey, it's me, Kat. Oh, hi, what's up? Okay, gotta go. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. How can I help you? Hi. I was just wondering if you had time to answer a few questions. Sure thing, ma'am. Ask away. I'm trying to get a hold of Charles Wade. Would you happen to know how to reach him? I'm sorry, ma'am, but Charles Wade is a public figure. He has explicitly asked us not to provide his contact details to anyone. Is there any way you can make an exception? I really need to talk to Mr. Wade. No can do. I can't really help you out unless you have some sort of official business. I do have official business. I'm Deputy Reagan. I'm calling from Conwell Springs Sheriff's Department. Hmm. I can see that you're actually calling from the station. You say you're a cop? You don't sound like a cop. What the hell is that supposed to mean? It's just because I'm a woman, right? Women don't belong in law enforcement? Is that what you're saying? That's so sexist. Now that's hardly what... Do you have any idea what I have to go through every day? Nobody takes me seriously. The dirty looks, the sexual innuendos, I've... Relax, okay? I'll check the files. It's 555-7641. Thanks, buddy. Wade Residence. Hi, this is Kathy Rain. I'm calling for Charles Wade. He doesn't live here anymore. What's this about? What do you want with my father? 
I'd just like to have a quick word with Mr. Wade. It's about my grandfather, Joseph Rain. You're 20 years late, girl. My father has neither time nor energy to deal with you people. But... This conversation is over. Unless my father explicitly says he wants to talk to you, it's not going to happen. What a stuck-up, overclass witch. Well, she hasn't heard the last from me. I'm going to talk to that old man one way or another. McConnell Air Force Base, how can I help you? Hi. I was just wondering if you had time to... Sure thing, ma'am. Ask away. What can you tell me about McConnell Air Force Base? This is one of the oldest Air Force bases in the U.S., established during World War I. The main purpose of it is to train fighter pilots. The McConnell Flight School is well-renowned all around the country. In the late 80s, the school started accepting a limited number of civilian applicants due to the high demand. Some of the most famous dogfighters in U.S. history, such as Ethan Fireball Jenkins, Joseph Vigilante Rain, and Brett Xavier Myers trained at this very base. Charles Wade, the great industrialist, did too. Some claim that many of his revolutionary ideas came from the former chief mechanic here, the late Niles Bloom. Interesting. Thanks for the history lesson. Do you recognize the aviator call sign, Cocky? Afraid not, ma'am. I know all the call signs here, and I'm positive it's not one of them. This isn't current, though. It might have been used as early as World War II. Oh, that's unfortunate. We don't keep any official records of call signs. The only option I can think of is to get a hold of somebody who was around back then. Any suggestions? The only person I can think of who was still alive would be Charles Wade. The billionaire? He was stationed at McConnell? He was, up until the point when he founded Wade Industries in the 60s. All right, that's all. Goodbye, ma'am. Hi, this is Eileen speaking. Hey, it's me, Kat. Oh, hi, what's up? I don't need to ask her about that. Okay, gotta go. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. McConnell Air Force Base, how can I help you? Hi. I was just wondering if you had time. Sure thing, ma'am. All right, that's all. Goodbye, ma'am. After the beep. I want to put a message in here, but I'm not sure what. I think I'll sleep on it and try to figure out something tomorrow. Oh, hello, dear. There are a few things I need to ask you, Grandma. Very well, dear. See you later, Grams. Take care, dear.
a mere single pair of boots on display. Boy, do we live in different worlds. Tragic drowning in Conwell Springs. In early morning on Sunday the 14th, a teenage girl found dead near Conwell Lake. The girl is survived by her mother, father, and younger brother. The funeral service will be held at Conwell Cemetery on the 21st of July. The notice is dated July 15, 1975. Tragic story. I wonder why Grandpa saved this. It's the penny I found in the briefcase. Looks like it was minted the same year I was born. Grandpa and me, we had this game where he would hide pennies around the house and I would go on a treasure hunt. Never in the attic, though. I thought it was too scary up there. Oh, hello, dear. There are a few things I need to ask you, Grandma. Very well, dear. Do you know anything about a young girl drowning around here? Oh, yes. It was the saddest thing. She was only 16. We never really knew the family. They preferred to keep to themselves. Do you remember the name of the girl or her family? I'm awfully sorry, dear. I, I just can't recall. That's okay, Grandma. I was just wondering why Grandpa would have wanted to save this. Joseph was always affected by the tragedy of others. Perhaps he wanted to do something for the family. In any case, he didn't speak to me about it. Well, gotta go, Grams. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. No result for that. You've reached Erica Wade. Leave a message after the beep. I want to put a message in here, but I'm not sure what. I think I'll sleep on it and try to figure out something tomorrow. Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Hey, Lenny. Do you remember anything about a girl drowning around here? Yeah, I remember my mom telling me about that. I was like six at the time, though. Do you remember her name? Oh, man. Not really. I was so little. I think it was something with an L. Linda? Laura? Something like that. All right. I'll keep looking. Well, gotta go. See ya. Hello, Sheriff. Mind if I ask you a few more questions? <sighs> if you must. Do you know anything about the drowning here in 1975? 16-year-old girl? You have a memory problem? I told you I haven't been working here that long. Besides, even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Juvenile cases are a sensitive matter. That's all for now. Good.
Hey. Hi there. Okay, gotta go. See ya. If I ever need to find evidence, I'll know where to look. They look sturdy enough. Wouldn't be able to break them open without taking my time and making a lot of noise. Hmm. Maybe there's something in here about that drowning. Nope. Looks like I'm gonna need her name. If I ever need to find evidence, I'll know where to look. They look sturdy enough. Wouldn't be able to break them open without taking my time and making a lot of noise. A large evidence locker. Probably for securing some of the... No wanted posters. I'm disappointed. Hey, it's me, Kat. Oh, hi, what's up? I'm trying to track down this young girl who drowned in the lake here. Okay. How hard can a dead person be to track down? They tend to stay in one place, you know. Ha, ah, very funny, E. I don't even know her name, just when she died. Oh, well, there must be some way to connect a name to that date. Yeah, maybe. Okay, gotta go. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy! family mausoleum. It says, Christ, no reason to go in there. Hey, kid. Hi, yourself. What are you doing? None of your business. Huh, I like you, kid. You're not here alone, right? Where's your mom? Oh, she's around. I don't see her. You must be blind or something. I'll go look for your mom, okay? Don't go anywhere. Whatever. Alright, this is the right date. Looks like her name was Lily Myers. I should try to get a hold of her family.
I shouldn't leave while that kid is alone. A family mausoleum. No reason to go. Kid? Guess he found his mom. She's been dead for two decades. I could try to find someone in her family, but I'll need a full name. Hi, this is Eileen speaking. Hey, it's me, Kat. Oh, hi, what's up? I don't need to ask her about that. Okay, gotta go. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. McConnell Air Force Base, how can I help you? Hi. I was just wondering if you had time to answer a few questions. Sure thing, ma'am. Ask away. I don't see a reason to ask him about that. All right, that's all. Goodbye, ma'am. You've reached Erica Wade. Leave a message after the beep. I want to put a message in here, but I'm not sure what. I think I'll sleep on it and try to figure out something tomorrow. Oh, hello, dear. There are a few things I need to ask you, Grandma. Very well, dear. I found out that the drowned girl's name was Lily Myers. Ring a bell? Oh, yes. Oh, how could I forget? Sue, Jack, oh, and their children, Lily and Nathan. Do they still live around here? Mother and son do. I, I see them in town from time to time. They live somewhere near the lake. But not the father? No. He disappeared not long after Lily took her own life. Whoa, she killed herself. That's news to me. Oh, that girl had been troubled for years. Truman made an official statement later. It was no accident. I see. Do you know how I can reach the family? Not really, dear. Like I said, they tend to keep to themselves. I don't see a reason to ask her about that. Bye, Grandma. I'll be back later. So long. All right, found an address.
55 degrees. Not too chilly, thankfully. Yes? Can I help you? I hope so. My name's Rain. Kathy Rain. Joseph's girl. The one they sent away. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. Well, what do you want? I had some questions about your daughter, Lily. Well, you know what? I don't have any answers, girl. Lily was precious, special. Lily died. That's all there is to it. My grandfather came to see you, right? To ask about her? Maybe he did. I don't see how that's any of your business. I'm not asking for much, Mrs. Myers. Then clearly you have no idea what it's like losing a child. Goodbye. Huh, you again. I'm not leaving until I get some answers. Bite me! Won't you ever give up? I'm still here and will be until you agree to talk to me. Enjoy a night curled up in the leaves then. Just go away. I deserve a few moments of your time. What you deserve is a slap in the face. Stop it! I'm not leaving until I get some answers. Bite me! Looks like there's a small dock with a couple of boats. I don't have a reason to go down there. Somebody around here is a chain smoker. We have something in common. Good to know. Huh. You again. My smoke's about a half a pack. St That's not how you treat premium tobacco. Won't you- Care to join me for a smoke, Mrs. Myers? Well, um, I'm gonna have to think about it. Well, I suppose one smoke can hurt. And that's when he realized it was his own bong. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, oh now that was a good one. <laughs> you know what, Kathy, you're okay. Sorry for being such a cranky old bag before I get a short fuse when I run out of smokes. Now that's an understatement. Good thing I had my morning smoke, otherwise we would have had a fist fight on our hands. <laughs> oh, it's getting chilly. Why don't we head inside? Now, this here's my boy, Nathan. He's special. Nate, be polite and say hello to Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi there, big guy. What you doing, big fella? Drawing. Oh, yeah? What are you drawing? The nice red man. You mean Santa? No, the nice red man. Now what did I say about raising your voice at strangers? Sorry, Mama. I'll be nice. The red man is nice. Don't mind him. He gets so absorbed in his drawings thanks to that wild imagination of his, just like his sister. So, you wanted to ask me about Lily? Yeah. Do you mind telling me what happened when my grandfather came to see you? Well, he knocked on my door a few years after Lily had passed away. I didn't know Joseph too well myself, but I'd heard of him, and the good he'd done for the other people around here. So I let him in. 
He started asking a bunch of questions about Lily, like if I was absolutely sure that she, that it was suicide. And what did you say? The truth, that she was depressed and, and had been for a long time. I had no doubts about what happened. Hmm, all right. Anything else? Well, he was weirdly curious about her paintings. Lily painted? Yep, that's one of hers right there on the wall. I see, it's beautiful. So, in what way was he curious? He asked if Lily had painted anything odd or strange. I didn't really get what he was after, but I, I let him have a look at her work. He spent some time browsing through them, and then he wrote something down on a piece of paper, thanked me, and left. Huh. Any idea of what he could have seen? Not really. I had the paintings all lined up. Could have been any of them. Would you mind showing them to me? Well, I would if I could, but this is the only one I have left. I sold the rest many years ago to this weirdo art collector. Tell me about this art collector person. Rich, fancy looking, in his 50s or thereabouts. I'd say he'd be around 70 now if he's still alive. He knocked on that door one day with a wad of cash in his hand. Five thousand dollars. He wanted everything that Lily so much as touched with a brush. Huh, did he say why? Nope, but I got the feeling that most of that dough was paid so he could avoid any questions. I took the money. I still had Nathan to support. Did the stranger give you his name? No. Well, his face was far from forgettable, though. Big nose, bright blue eyes, looked black Irish. He had a thick black mane, turning gray, no beard. All right, Sue. Thanks. So, tell me about Lily's art. It used to be about cheerful things. Landscapes, animals, bright colors. But as she drifted further into depression, she started painting horrible things. Death and decay. And the last few pieces looked like something out of a nightmare. That's awful. Did Lily ever get any recognition for her art? Not really. Except from the guy I told you about who bought most of her paintings. Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather? How he ended up in a wheelchair? Stroke, wasn't it? At least that's what I heard. Not necessarily. There are some divided opinions about it. Now that I think about it, that whole ordeal happened to him not long after he came here. How long? A week, maybe, at the most. Does the name Charles Wade mean anything to you? Oh, he's some big-time businessman, ain't he? Yeah, he owns a large company. That about sums up what I know about the fella. I don't need to ask her about that. I don't need to ask her about that. Mind telling me what Lily was like, Sue? I'd be happy to. She was Nathan's older sister by two years. Lily was like any girl growing up, normal, happy, Talking about school, boys, and whatnot. And she and Nathan were close back then, always playing together in the woods. When Lily was ten, she started drawing, always doodling on just about anything she could get her hands on. We didn't have much, really, and so she used what she could. Once I even caught her scribbling on toilet paper. <laughs> on her... Twelfth birthday, we gave Lily a thick sketchbook with an assortment of pencils. She was ecstatic. That was the happiest I'd ever seen her. From that day, drawing became her life. Eventually, her art teacher at school helped her to get started with oil painting. When Lily was 15, something changed. At first, I thought it was just usual teen angst, but no. This was something different. She started going out disappearing for long periods of time. She locked herself in when painting. She never used to do that. I tried everything. Counseling, support groups, antidepressants. Nothing worked. About a year later, she just gave up. And well, 
You know the rest. I'm sorry, Sue. That must have been unimaginable. Thanks, darling, but it's been a while now. I've learned to live with it. You know, I've been through something similar. My mom. She never killed herself, but, well, she came close. That's a damn shame. I heard about her problems. Is she doing any better now? Better isn't the word I'd use. I had to put her in a place where she couldn't hurt anyone, including herself. Yeah, life ain't easy for any of us. Flip a few coins along the way and I could have ended up somewhere like that myself. I'm awfully sorry things went that way for you, Ma. Anyhow. Thanks, Sue. Taking it one step at a time. What do you do to support the two of you? Mm, a little bit of this and that. Got me some cash saved up, too. Nathan helps out when he can. What happened to your husband, if you don't mind me asking? You could say he didn't quite cope as well as I did with what happened to Lily. He got himself a death wish after what happened to her started drinking and getting into all sorts of trouble. Five years left for him in the joint now. Been there for 15 Man, that must be rough for you. Oh, we're doing just fine without him, aren't we, Nate? Mama takes good care of us. Mama sure does. I think I'm gonna head off now. Sure thing, little cat. Come back anytime. It's an early painting by Lily Myers. I can smell something cooking. Nah, he's stuck in his own little world. Yet another burial ground for those sweet, addictive, not to mention cancer-inducing sticks of tobacco. I'm a huge fan. Very lifelike. Contrary to popular belief, I don't believe the owls are more than what they seem. Rest in peace, Grandpa. I wish things could... Hello, dear. There are a few things I need to ask you, Grandma. Very well, dear. I don't see a reason to ask her about that. I don't see a reason to ask her about that. Bye, Grandma. I'll be back later. So long.
no result for that. Nope, couldn't find it. Hi, this is Eileen speaking. Hey, it's me, Kat. Oh, hi, what's up? I don't need to ask her about that. I don't need to ask her about that. Okay, gotta go. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. You've reached Erica Wade. Leave a message off. I want to put a message in here, but I'm not sure what. Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Hey, Lenny, could you check the files for a police report? A girl who drowned around here, Lily Myers? I'd love to help, Kathy, but you better check with the sheriff first. Fine, I'll do that. Nah, I don't want to ask him about that. Nah, I don't want to ask him about that. Well, gotta go. See ya. Hello, Sheriff. Mind if I ask you a few more questions? <sighs> if you must. Do you know anything about a drowning here in 1975? Young girl named Lily Myers? That case was handled by Truman. I wasn't involved. Could I have a look at that report? You have a memory problem? Ugh, fine. I don't need to ask him that. I don't need to ask him that. That's all for now. Good. Hey. Hi there. Okay, gotta go. See ya. Okay, there's gotta be something in here about Lily Meyer's death. Okay, what do we have here? Hmm, looks like somebody did a Virginia Wolf. I wonder if there's more to it. I already got the report. Hey. Hi there. Okay. See ya.
Oh, it's you again. Come on in. I had a, a few more questions, Sue. Shoot. I think I'm gonna head off now. Sure thing. I had a, a shoot. I'd rather just ask her about her daughter directly. I think I'm gonna head off. Sure thing, little. Hey, it's me, Cat. Oh, hi, what's up? Okay, gotta go. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. You've reached Erica Wade. Leave a message. I want to put a... Hello, dear. There are a few things I need to ask you, Grandma. Very well, dear. I don't want to show her that. Well, gotta go, Grams. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. Oh, it's you again. Come on in. I had a, a few more questions, Sue. Shoot. Hey, Sue, do you recognize any of these men? Well, there's Joseph Rain. <laughs> Always so handsome. I had such a crush on him back in the day. And... No way. That's him. The man who bought the paintings. He's, he's much younger here, but there's no mistake in that hair and nose. Are you sure? I'm positive, little cat. That's the guy who walked into this cabin with five grand in cash. That's very helpful, Sue. Thanks. Ugh, another question for the elusive Mr. Wade. <laughs> what do you think about this church? It's a good church. I go there from time to time. 
I bring Nate, too, when that boy needs the fear of God put into him. No reason to show her that. No reason to show her that. I think I'm gonna head off now. Sure thing, little cat. Come back any time. It's getting late. I should head back to the city. Hey, you're still up. I was wondering when you'd show up. How did it go? Long story. I found out about some stuff that happened when I was a kid. Wow, what a mystery. So what's the plan now? Some shut-eye is the plan. I'm about to pass out. Oh, I couldn't possibly sleep now. I'm way too excited. Well, that makes one of us, Nighty. <sighs> Good night, cat. Hey, Kathy, wake up! Ugh, you are so lucky there are no sharp objects near this bed. Guess what? I got an idea. Please tell me it involves you taking a sabbatical. Haha, <laughs> so you found all this evidence, right? Pictures, tapes, and stuff? I guess. Why? Well, as you know, I have a computer. And I know this hacker guy, Dave, and... Oh, never mind. I'll just write you a note. You go back to sleep. Seriously, Eileen, sometimes I just marvel at how your brain works. I know, right? Are you sure you want to do this, Catherine? You still have time, if you think there's any chance you would change your mind. I'm sure, Doctor. Just get it out of me. But please, don't tell my mom. I'm sorry, but we have to do that. It's the law. Nobody has to know, just pretend it slipped your mind. I have enough shit going on with her already, this would just add fuel to the fire. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do. Fine. Let's just get this over with then. Right this way. Ugh, I hate that dream. I guess Eileen went to class. I probably should too. Nah. <laughs>